respected listeners today is the second day of the month of rabiul awwal rabi' in arabic means the weather of spring coming of the weather of spring which brings beauty bloom all the good things rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came in this month of rabiul awwal to take out the darkness and the gloominess from this world and to bring nur light into this world we all express our love to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam especially in the month of rabiul awwal but that love is not just for the month of rabiul awwal it should be throughout the year and throughout our lives Somebody asked Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu this was much time after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away they said how much was your love for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to us Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was more beloved than our children our mothers and our wealth for us he was more cherishable and beloved than a glass of cold water in the extreme thirst of the desert of arabia how much do we love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how much do we love allah how much do we love the quran one of the pious predecessors In fact said Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says you can tell by how much you love the Quran because if you love the Quran for sure you love your Allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sufyan Thawri rahmatullah alayhi says to love prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to follow him قل ان كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى عند القران says tell them o prophet of allah if they claim they love allah let them follow your ways they should follow you فاتبعوني then allah will love them not only allah will love them allah will forgive their sins for allah is the most forgiving and merciful One of the great pious predecessors Sahil ibn Abdullah rahmatullah alayhi says one of the signs of the love of Allah is the love of the Quran and the sign of the love of the Quran is the love of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the sign of the love of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the love of his sunnas his ways and the sign of the love of his sunna and his ways is the love of the akhirah the love of the hereafter and the sign of the love of the hereafter is to keep ourselves detached from the material things of this world and the sign of the detachment from the material things and love of this world is to take enough provisions be contented with enough provisions what allah has given you to take it to the life of the hereafter saad ibn rabi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is the richest man living in medina when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to medina in the aftermath of the battle of uhud rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells one of the companions zaid ibn thabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu to go look for saad and ask him how is he doing zaid ibn thabit radiyallahu ta'ala goes to look for saad ibn rabi' could not find cannot find him then he comes across a pile of the bodies of the shuhada of the martyrs and he hears a small sound coming from those bodies and he sees it saad ibn rabi' who is still alive taking his last breaths he says oh saad the prophet of allah is asking how are you doing 
In his last moments, this is something, respected listeners, a love which is hard to comprehend and understand from the intellects we have in this modern day and age. We can only understand these episodes, these incidents, probably the full reality of this on the Day of Judgment. When we see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we see Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Saad ibn Rabi Raziyallahu Ta'ala Anhu says, when asked, Rasulullah is asking, how are you doing? He says, tell Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I'm making dua to Allah, that, oh Allah, give Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most handsome reward you have given, you have given to any Prophet before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, give him the best and the most handsome rewards that has be, ever been given to any Prophet. And oh Zayd, if anything happens to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if any harm comes to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this world or in this war, in the aftermath of the war, know that Allah will not absolve you. Allah will not clear you of your sins. Saying that he died. Hinda Ansariya radiallahu anha, one of the female companions of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Medina. This is not the same Hinda, the wife of Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu. This who was from Makkah. This is Hinda Ansariya from Medina al Munawwara. Her husband's name was Amr bin Jamu. He used to limp when he used to walk, and she encourages him to go fight in the battle of Uhud. She has a son. She has a husband. She has a father. Her husband limpingly goes to the Battle of Uhud and fights. When the Battle of Uhud is over, some rumors spread in the city of Medina, in the homes, that Prophet ﷺ has been killed, has been murdered. She leaves her home immediately, comes to the base of Mount Uhud, comes across a group of people who have just returned from the, from the mountain down, she asks, Mada fa'ala Rasulullah, how is the Prophet of Allah? They say, we don't know, but your husband has been killed. She says, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun, goes on trekking on the hill of Mount Uhud. Another group comes, she asks, how is the Prophet of Allah? They say, we do not know, but your son has been killed, Mu'adh. She says, inna lillah, keeps trekking on the, on the hill, Another group comes, they say, she asks, how is the Prophet of Allah doing? They say, we don't know, but your brother has been killed. Imagine the trauma, respected listeners. For us, when we lose our parent or a sibling, it is extremely traumatic. It, it, it is extremely, extremely traumatic experience for days and weeks for us to overcome the trauma. Now here she is, she lost her husband, lost her father, lost her son, lost her brother. Four people all wiped out from her family. Even then she's asking, how is the Prophet of Allah? Again, I was saying this, our intellects cannot understand this thing. She finally sees Prophet ﷺ alive and well, injured but well. She goes, falls down at the feet of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tears in her eyes. She says, Ya Rasulullah, kullu musibatim ba'duka jalalu. O Prophet of Allah, every affliction, difficulty goes away after looking at your blessed face, O Prophet of Allah. In another narration, she says, O Prophet of Allah, the sting or the trauma of the loss of my whole family is not affecting me as such as it's making me happy to see your blessed face, O Prophet of Allah. Rabi Raziallahu Ta'ala Anhu is a young Sahabi. He used to keep water for wudu, for ablution for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of Tahajjud. In the late hours of the night, wee hours of the morning. A miswak, a container of water with wudu and a praying mat. Rasulullah would use that, he would become pleased with that. 
One night, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks him, Oh Rabir, you do so much to me every night. Ask me what you want. And I will make dua to Allah. Imagine the dua of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one on one. In person. In the tahajjud. When Allah's throne is closest to the earth. Masjid al Nabawi. Says, oh Rabbi, ask me whatever you want. I will make dua, I'll raise hands right now. What would we say, respected listeners? Because of the times we are living in, we would probably say the general consensus would be, oh Prophet of Allah, make dua that, you know, the struggles I'm going through in my life, the environment, the children, the, the family life, the job, all these things become easy and Allah is pleased with me and my family, protect my family, O Prophet of Allah, make the dua. Rabi radiallahu anhu says, O Prophet of Allah, make dua that I will be in your company in paradise. That I will have your company in paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that is all you want? Anything else you'd wish for? Rabi says, no Prophet of Allah, that's it. I want your company in paradise. And then Prophet Wasallam says, and this is a lesson for all of us respected listeners. We see some saints, some pious people, some elderly people, some scholars, great scholars. We tell them to make dua, which is a good thing. But this is a world of cause and effect. Just asking some pious person to make dua is not enough, is not good enough. A person, a young man has asked the Prophet of Allah to make dua and he's making dua for him, about to make dua but then Prophet Sallallahu tells him Oh Rabir, help me I will make dua for you but help me by doing extra prostrations doing extra sujood meaning making extra now optional prayers cause and effect. You do that, the effect will be, my dua will be accepted. If you tell the saints and the scholars and the pious people and the elders to make dua for us, that won't be enough. It might be a, a, accepted by Allah, but the chances are Allah wants us to make effort along with the duas. Like Rasulullah said, help me making more prostrations. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een respected. Listen, a person comes to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he says, Oh Prophet of Allah, when is the day of judgment going to come? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asks him, What preparations have you made for the day of judgment? The man says, Oh Prophet of Allah, I don't have much preparations. I do not have much worship. And he meant the optional worship, the optional prayers, the optional fasting, the faraid, the obligatory acts, they were very particular. That was given, they would perform that. He says, oh Prophet of Allah, I do not have much worship with me, except the obligatory acts. But oh Prophet of Allah, I love you, oh Prophet of Allah. I love you more than anything else, O Prophet of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-mar'u ma'aman ahab. A person will be with whom he loves on the day of judgment. A person will be with that person on the day of judgment whom he loves. If he loves the Prophet of Allah, he will be with the Prophet of Allah. This hadith, was the most beloved saying of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the entire galaxy of the companions. Because they knew how much they loved the Prophet of Allah and they knew that they would be in the company of the Prophet of Allah on the Day of Judgment. And this love, respected listeners, this love took them away from the love of the worldly material things, from the worldly wealth, from the trials and tribulations of this world and even death, the fear of death itself. 
That is what love of Allah and the love of the Prophet does. Islam is a dynamic religion, respected listeners. It's just not that five times Salat, fasting, Hajj, Zakat. That is very dry. Islam is deep, is spiritual, dynamic, and change the lives of the Sahaba, change the countries, the nations, when they had this love of Prophet of Allah and they moved around with that love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with them. And this love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, respected listeners, it can change our lives. And that is the whole purpose of the love of the Prophet of Allah. I can cry on my sins. I can cry much on my sins. But my life will not change until I bring that love of Rasulullah into my life, the love of Allah and his Prophet into my life. Nu'man radiallahu anhu, he used to drink. He was addicted to drinking. One time, a person cursed him. La'anahullah, may Allah curse you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't do this. Don't say that to him. I do not know anything of him, except that I know he loves Allah and his Prophet. But loving Allah and His Prophet does not cancel or negate major sins. But there is a lack of the love of Allah and His Prophet in that. Because the love of Allah and His Prophet will take a person to the obedience of Allah and His Prophet. That is what love does. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala who tells Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and no one can say this to the Prophet except Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He says, O Prophet of Allah, I have searched my soul. I have looked deep into myself. And I have realized I love you more than anyone else in this world. Except my own self. Except my own self. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Umar, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahba ilahim min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in aw kama qal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh Umar, your iman is not complete, is not perfect until your love for the Prophet is more than your parents, your children and all the people in the world. Umar radiallahu ta'ala then says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, if that is the case, I love you more than my own self. Now, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-an ya Umar, al-an. Now, O oh, Umar, now. In other words, what took you so long, O oh, Umar? Another interpretation is, Now your iman is complete and perfect, Umar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respected listeners, I ran out of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our lives with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may that change our lives, respected listeners. And I'll conclude quickly, respected listeners. Elections are coming up. It doesn't take average only two minutes to register for vote. Register, respected brothers and sisters. Vote. We need to have a voice. The Jewish people, may Allah guide them, may Allah bless them, are the most powerful lobby on, in America on the planet Earth because they have money, they have votes. African American peoples, their votes count. They don't have men, money, generally speaking, but they vote. They have a voice. Muslims, we don't do either of the things. We need to have a voice, respected listeners. We know what's happening around the world. Do not be surprised if that happens in America unless we have a voice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.